know what that means. I feel like I can't hear anything. Hold up. Lighthouse is on. What is it doing? Is it doing nothing? Is this a headphone issue or is this a plug-in issue? I swear to God, Lighthost, you gotta cooperate a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Just a li Okay. You know what? Fuck it. That's what my voice sounds like for the rest of the night, then. Welcome! <laughs> uh, it's Lexi Karma's 8th year anniversary. Um, very excited about that. I just released... Uh, not one, but two releases after... Uh, just not releasing anything other than like teasers and shit for years um so we're gonna talk a bit about that tonight as well um but yeah self-titled again is out self-titled again is a full-length remake of self-titled which is the first album i released uh it's basically the first like musical like big like project thing that i've released uh and i released it basically took it myself, by myself. Um, a few other people worked on it. Uh, my friend Danielle made the actual self-titled logo. Uh, my sister made the, uh, like, like the album art. Uh, other than that, um, like, all, all, for the original artwork, well, that's all I did, was the original sketch. Uh, but yeah, this one, self-titled again, uh, the only thing I reused from that was Danielle's logo. Um, everything else, completely, completely me. Um, uh, I re-recorded everything. My original idea was just to take the old WAV files and shit and maybe re-record new vocals or something like that. And then just, but I was like, you know what? No, if you're going to do it, just do it. Um, so as you can hear behind me right now, it's, uh, Once you're on from the new old album. Uh, so yeah. I was embarrassed for a long time of self-titled. Um, just because, like, I didn't use pitch correction for any of that shit. <laughs> um, it was just a very different place in my life. Uh, but yeah. Now it's out. <laughs> now it's out, and I am less embarrassed about it. Uh... But yeah, it's good. Uh, for the most part, I think it sounds, at the very least, in, mo in, in, in every given place on the album now, it at least sounds better than the original. Uh, and that's really, that was really my goal. So, I, uh, mission complete, right? Um, Fake and Stupid uh, is also out now. Fake and Stupid is a whole different thing to it. Um... Maybe I should put something on screen just so you have something to, like, look at, I guess. Um, let's see. I put up, like, uh, this. Put that up on screen. Perhaps. Perhaps, mayhaps. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. If I can. Fuck. If I can find anything. Here we go. Here we go. This is a, this, I use Firefox. <laughs> that's that's it. That's the announcement. That's the announcement. I use Firefox. Um, I don't know what I even put up on the screen. I guess I could put up the Spotify actually here. Hold up. Let's go. To my, let's fuck YouTube. Let's go to my Spotify. Yeah, check it out. Look, it's out. You can listen to it all. Wow. So yeah, now we're talking about Fake and Stupid. Uh, so Fake and Stupid is six songs long. Uh, it's only like 22 minutes, 22 and a half minutes. It's not a very long, like, big follow-up release, but I think, like, conceptually it holds its own in that regard. Um, it is, for all intents and purposes, I guess, a sequel <laughs> to uh, Self-Titled in a sense, just because, like, <sighs> the concept of it overall, there is a concept of it, uh, the concept overall is, is, is chronologically, that's where I was looking for, chronologically a sequel. Like, cause a lot of the happenstance that it focuses on did happen after I released, uh, the original, uh, music a long time ago. So, to, to my, to myself, a lot of these songs are like really fucking old. To you, as the listener, these are new. These, uh, other than Clingy, because I've teased Clingy for like, what, a year or two now? 
uh, the rest of the songs. Th these are completely new to you. Um, so I'm excited to talk about that a little bit more. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about some 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 teasy shit. That'd be really cool if I had something to talk about there. Um, actually, you know what? You know, you know, you know what I'm going to do, I think. Let me, let me check. I'm going to figure out when I'm dropping that. Because I have a future release um, that I want to talk about. Um, let's just drop it now because we're talking about a bunch of old music. We're gonna get back to talking about a bunch of this stuff again. I said, I say it, it's it's old, it's an old to me, to you, it's new. Um, here's what we're gonna do actually. I'm gonna shut this off for a sec. Let's uh, let's take a gander. Let's not take a gander. Let's take a gander. <laughs> let's take a let's take a gander. Oh my god, I'm the worst at this. Where is it? <laughs> there it is. Yeah. What do you think about that shit? There, there's gonna be another EP. <laughs> I'm not gonna randomly stop making music. Um, there's another EP that I'm working on. I don't have a date for when it's coming out. I don't even know if it's gonna be the next Lexi Karma project that comes out. It might be. Right now, I'm kind of 50-50 sitting on it. Um, it's called Heat Death BGM. Uh, and Heat Death BGM is not so much con conceptual um not so much conceptual um it's like it is like a loose concept kind of like you know dark side of the moon is like quote unquote concept album right it's kind of it's kind of like one of those it's not a co-eating camper situation uh and it's not like fake and stupid or it's like very clear cut to where like this is supposed to be its own like story and it's supposed to have its own thing going on that's like meticulous um heat death bgm is just kind of like a lot of these songs I'm putting out now are I've been sitting on them for a while and haven't been able to get them out in the quality that I want them to for a long, long time, which is why I'm super fucking excited and wasting an entire random ring stream <laughs> on talking about fake and stupid today because like it's finally fucking out and I'm so goddamn excited about it. Um, but yeah, um, Heath as BGM will be a little different. Heath as BGM is more. It kind of goes back to the hard rock roots of of self-titled i guess it doesn't really like but not really either uh, here's the main thing the main reason i'm making hate death beach ham is because i was looking at all the shit that i'm like oh i'm finally gonna be able to put all this stuff out it's coming to a head um not just fake and stupid but lexi karma projects that'll come out for the next like few years like maybe even the next decade is all stuff that i've been planning for like a while and frankly, I'm glad that I didn't really sit back then. I wasn't ready for it. Um, it was a, it was too premature, and I didn't see it at the time. Now, now I think it's like this is a good time to do this stuff. But also, like I've been writing music in between that, and it's not that it sounds like objectively better, right? It's just that like I've evolved as a composer, as a singer as a performer uh and i want to showcase that and it's hard to showcase that with these songs that like to me are kind of adolescent in a way um because i wrote them all like in my early 20s right um some of them earlier i think crystal from self-titled might have actually been written when i was like 19. um something like that but anyway i digress uh so Heat Death BGM will be a new thing with four new songs. Uh, I've already teased them in the Discord, so I can title drop those. Uh, the first song is called um, What Do I Want For Christmas? The second song is titled... I'm trying to remember the order. <laughs> I think the second song is the one you heard in that teaser, which is ironically Happy Song. 
That or I'm confusing it with the third track. Those two might be flipped. One or the other is um, uh, Devil Speak. And the last song on that is called Gale X Anna. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited about all that. Uh, because I want to, I want to be like, hey, this is new stuff. This is this, this is this is how I write now. This is what Lexi Karma sounds like in my brain. Because in your brain, it sounds like this. It sounds like big and stupid. It sounds like self-titled again. This is what Lexi Karma sounds like to you. And to me, it has like this whole different sound uh, that I haven't been able to showcase yet. And so I want to like put a put a little side focus of Lexi Karma into putting out stuff that's more representative of how I feel in the now. Um, as much as I can versus stuff like this, where it's like, you know, that's pretty, that's, that's, that's old news to me. All right. Um, but yeah, right now it's playing on fingers and toes. This is also in fake and stupid. Oh, I can't believe it's fucking out. Uh, <laughs> this, I've literally allocated like this hour time slot to just literally geek out about how excited I am that like, this is a thing that you can listen to now. Like other people can just listen to this now. It's no longer just in my brain. Uh, like that's so fucking rad. Um, anyway, uh, fake and stupid. So let's talk about the concept of it. Um, because you know, even though I said it's like chronologically a sequel to self-titled, you don't need to know. I was like, <laughs> what that's all about to to get the gist. Um, so with fake and stupid, fake and stupid is purposefully cyclical. Uh, for anybody who hasn't listened to it yet. Um, or maybe you hadn't noticed when you listened to it earlier today when it came out. Uh, so the, like, melody line on Clingy, like the chorus, which is just a synth, and there aren't any vocals really on the chorus, um, for the most part. Uh, that melody line is repurposed for the vocals at, that play at the end of Heart Grow Fonder, and that's on purpose. Uh, I didn't just run out of ideas. Uh, I reuse that motif because it bleeds back into each other and back around. Um, it's in a sense where the EP could just be listened to on fucking rotation. Um, and not saying like, oh, it's so good, you want to listen to it again and again, but like, if you do, it is like, supposed to be that ride, like, cyclically, because that's what the album is about. Um... Uh, but yeah, Clingy. So Clingy, <laughs> I hated. I hated that Clingy was the one I released first to promote the EP. And the reason I say that isn't because I hate Clingy. It's not because I think it's a bad song. Uh, Clingy is a... It's kind of like a lot of the stuff on Self-Titled, where it's not really how I feel about it. It's more of a... This is a th th this is kind of like an outlook, like a window to this feeling and how I felt about this general concept at the time. And the general concept at the time was all of my friends' clingy ex-boyfriends. <laughs> um, so that's what clingy is really about. But like, without that context, without you not knowing that, and you not getting the gist of it just by listening to it and getting that vibe from it, like, it's pretty safe to assume that Clingy just sounds like a fucking misogynist, shitty song. Um, but I swear to you, it's not. That's not the point. In fact, the opposite, arguably, is the point. Um, but more importantly, like, it's more about, like, if we're gonna, again, chronologically go with this, you could point at, like, my late high school, like, early college years, I guess, where I had a bunch of friends that were having all these issues relationship-wise with this kind of thing. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's Clingy. That's basic. That's the basic gist of what Clingy is about. Uh, Blackberry Seed is about a lot of self-deprecation and stuff that I just assume now that I've been medicated for a while, like, it'll go away. Uh, self-titled is kind of like that journey I took until taking medication, and more is kind of like, basically like, when I started taking meds. Um, so with Blackberry Seed, it's more about like this general feeling of like it's that it's the, it's the emo era of like the early 2000s right but the point of it isn't that the point of it is like i think where a lot of people resonated with that as teenagers in that time period was because of this like you know uh 
feeling that maybe they were like fucking worthless and they deserve this or something like that. So that's kind of where it comes from. Um, <laughs> um, so it kind of focuses on that and just kind of looks at it as as that. But it's also it's not so much inward. Like self titled has a lot of like songs that are about me with other people, but it's also like mostly introspective because that's you know it's called self titled. Um, Fake and stupid is a more about my relationships with certain people. A lot of it you could focus on with the Love Life album. That was another point of the CP to kind of that I wanted to I wanted to sh just get out of the way. I wanted like love songs can be done well, but love songs are seen as bad. There's a stigmatism behind it because of how they're portrayed in like pop music. Um, and I'm not talking like pop music as genre, I'm talking about like top 40, right? Um, and uh, that kind of like, I don't know, uh, it's hard to explain. But basically I wanted this to be like, okay, so I have this, and cause you know, I love all music. I wanted to <laughs> fucking put that concept of like, okay, what if Lexi Karma wrote a love song? Well cool you've already written songs about loving your friends loving people who didn't love you back etc you can you know just put all this into one ep get it out of your system be mushy be cheesy be corny be horny do it all do it in this ep get it out of your system but also make it good and make it conceptually worth listening to at all that's a weird coincidence i started playing heart Girl fonder that's the next song in the ep that was a complete coincidence. I did not say to do that. Um, but yeah. Uh, uh, so that, that was why I made Fake and Stupid in the first place. Uh, the original idea as well for Fake and Stupid was going to be the five stages of grief. It was going to originally be a very different uh, EP. Uh, in that sense. Uh... It was originally Five Stages of Grief. Most of the songs were were different. Uh, a Lack of Closure was on a different project that I uh, kind of just cast off to the wayside for a bit, and I decided to fit more here based on the context of what it was. Uh, I think On Fingers and Toes was going to be on it the whole time. Clingy was going to be on it the whole time. Clingy was one of the like my first ideas of it. Oh, I should address the elephant in the room um, as well. Uh, I'm done with that thought, basically, anyway. Uh, Lexi Karma started as like a, a prog rock kind of sort of, like alt rock, like uh, band thing kind of, right? Like that was the project. That was what it was supposed to sound like. Um, and it has guitars. Like guitars are a big focus of it. It's guitar based music. Um. Big and Stupid, if you haven't noticed, has zero guitars. Um, that's by design. My original challenge for that was, you know, I want to make a bunch of Lexi Carver shit that's in a bunch of different genres. Um, and that hasn't really gone away. Um, it's just, this is where we're at in that process. Um, so Big and Stupid is like, what if I did an electronic EP? Uh, what if, could I make a, an album that I feel lives up to Lexi Karma name? of what I think that is in my brain, the image I have of that in my brain, while using no guitars. Because at the time, that was a big deal to me, because I was writing stuff on guitar a lot of the time. Uh, now I mostly just, you know, compose it. Um, otherwise, a lot of my songs over the past m many years have been, like, the guitar is there. It's a thing I don't want to get rid of, but it's also, like, not a focus, because I'm not that good at guitar. Um... <laughs> But yeah, um, that's why it's called Fake and Stupid, because a lot of this has to do with adolescence and blaming myself for basically being adolescent when I was, like, a teenager still. And, like, this kind of feeling of in your early to mid-20s, you're supposed to have it all fucking figured out because your grandpa's aunt did once in fucking 1920. I don't fucking know. Um, just garbage. Uh... So it's called fake and stupid because that's what I used to call 
uh, basically any music that didn't have cool guitar stuff in it, whatever I deemed cool, cool guitar stuff. Um, I didn't like stuff that was more synth based. I didn't like stuff that was like more MIDI based because I thought it was like fake and garbo. Despite still using synths in a lot of really early stuff that I was writing as a kid. Um, very, very strange. Very stupid fucking outlook on on the creative field of music, the art. Um, but yeah, um, so now Fake and Stupid is out, and it's basically the idea of it was, if I show this to my teenage self, she would probably say that about it, and I, I think that's the whole thing with it. Um, but the title then, as I started looking back more and more on what it meant to make this EP, when I started fleshing out what songs are going to be on here, what they sound like, what the lyrics are, I realized it's a little more than that, um, and I think it fits like the whole the whole thing the whole package feel really um so that's why i decided to call it that um let's see we kind of left off talking about them track by track i think we hit blackberry seed pretty well um yeah i think it would blackberry seed pretty well um i think so far like i know i shouldn't say this stuff because like i'm not a household name or anything like not that many people listen to Lexi karma and that's fine like i know i'm the biggest Lexi karma fan and that's okay um <laughs> uh self-titled more was always the favorite like hands down i showed that album to a bunch of people before i released it and everyone was like more is the shit more is awesome like here's some pointers but also like more is the shit more is the fucking best thing you have ever made and I was like, fuck, you might be right. Um, I think if there's one like that on Fakin' Stupid, part of me thought it might be Harker Fonder just because of the complexity of it. Uh, but then I realized, no, I, I think Blackberry Seed. I think I think Blackberry Seed might be the more of Fakin' Stupid. Um, it's not as climactic, but I think it's more impactful and, and it's just a cool song. Um, I, I, and, and so far that's the feedback I've gotten. Most of the good feedback I've gotten before this came out and now that it is out has been about Black Bear Seed. Um, so I think that's the more of Lexi Karma. Um, anyway. Uh, a lack of closure. I don't want to explain this quickly. I mean, I got plenty of time, I think. How much time do I got to talk about this? Uh, we got time. We got plenty of time. Um... A lack of closure is where we start getting more specific into like different um, connections with people that I had, most of which I no longer really have one with, um, and you know, kind of what that meant to me back then, uh, and how a lot of them kind of feed together into the same like concept of cyclical obsession, which is kind of what the EP is about. Um, it's about putting a lot of effort and weight on your own shoulders for entities that you have basically made up and 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 projected onto someone else. And that's super um, true for the meaning behind a lack of closures lyrics. Uh, a lack of closure is about um, someone I had a falling out with um, because like, we were i don't think either of us knew what the fuck we were actually doing <laughs> it's the main thing um but like yeah i i thought like that was the person that like i wanted to spend the rest of my life with and obviously totally isn't like i'm married now and no it's not the same person uh <laughs> uh but then i yeah like looking back like even like a few years after the fact i realized after the fact i'm like no that was you had no idea what the fuck you were doing. It was just that somebody wanted to talk to you a little more than you were used to, um, and you thought you had an in. Like, it was it was desperation more than anything, um, and it sucked. Um, but yeah, that's mostly what lack of closure is about. I'm drinking Dr Pepper. I wasn't. I realized I did that and sniffled, like, <laughs> that's what it's about. Um, really, honestly, like, tangent. Fake and stupid really shouldn't necessarily be seen as a woe is me EP. That, like, shouldn't be the 
take away from it. Like, you can view my art, my music, my lyrics, however you want. Whatever it means to you is what it means. If that brightens your day, if that makes you sort through life a little uh, quicker and easier. But, um, or it's just fun to think of it that way. I, I, but like, I think that if there's a takeaway that I would tell you to do, it'd be a lot of things, but not... You know, you shouldn't go, oh, poor, poor uh, late teens, early 20s, Aiden. You should go, wow, that, uh, yeah, that's definitely a thing that happens, huh? It's more observational, <laughs> I guess, in that regard than it is supposed to be like a sob story. If that makes sense. Um. So, yeah, anyway, lack of closure is kind of about that person. Um, And we did spend a lot of time together for the short time that we were um friends um and then we had our big falling out because i thought that we would be more than that and was very 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 hardly shut down and in hindsight i don't blame this person for what how that transpired at all um uh i think there was a bit of resentment after the fact as well um uh which on both our ends which sucks um and i wish it wasn't like that but it is how it is. You know, there's a lot of people in the world and you end up having that relationship with some people. Sometimes you just have to make a giant fucking ass of yourself with someone you really care about um, to, uh, you know, learn from your mistakes from there. Uh, but yeah, that's basically what that's about <laughs> is is kind of this obsessive, like projecting things onto other people and then being really into that idea but it being stupid um like the uh, like the title okay uh that's that one i think that's as far as my brain cares to replicate thought on right now uh for for that specific song uh the lyrics of promathon i guess we'll talk about um promathon's uh compositional inspiration was like early uh 2000s like you know stuff they would play at, at prom back in my day um but like mostly just like you know pop hits that the that teenagers listen to like everyone knew all these songs but i don't think anyone really like super duper liked them like a bunch of um that, that era of like usher shit i guess Never mind, K's in the room and says I love that era of Usher shit. Maybe maybe that's another thing into the EP that's like part of the concept. What? What what else plays on there? What else plays on the throwback station? What what would play on there that they would play at prom when we were kids? Ludo. Yeah, yeah, some little drum. Yeah. It would have been generally the same, like, shit. Interesting. Well, uh, that was my wife. See, now everything in this EP conceptually has come to pass. <laughs> um, fuck, fuck all of this. Um, anyway. Um, but yeah, that, that's conceptually what it, or that's compositionally, that's the, that was the inspiration for it was like, what if I kind of did something like that, but it sounded like Lexi Karma and it was all fucked up. And I just had a bunch of cool ideas of what to do with that. Um, originally I cheated and there was an acoustic guitar on that point at one point. Um, there's a synth, like a, roughly, I think like a minute and a half, two minutes into that song or something that goes like, dun, 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 dun. Originally that was just going to be an acoustic guitar uh and there was an acoustic guitar that did this like finger style weird like i don't really flamenco i guess it was just finger style like folky like acoustic guitar and it was really somber sounding and shit i just turned it to a synth later i think it sounds better than what i would probably would have recorded it was kind of a weird like fingering too it was, it was hard <laughs> anyway this is 18 plus stream uh, so Promathon, lyrically though, is kind of fast forwarding from that 
whole uh, relationship with that person to uh, someone else later that was kind of this emotional rebound for me and I thought maybe it would be the same for me and I was like, hey, maybe that, that's just how some people meet. Um, but it, I don't think it was healthy for either of us. Plus, I didn't really realize the gravity of... Because I was raised in an environment with what I call my family and there's a lot of heavy stuff that happened to them uh these people that i was there for in the moment because i you know i cared for them and now we're our relationships are stronger for that reason because you know we were we were combined in that uh <laughs> trauma uh but like in this van i'm meeting new people and 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 you know growing with them and learning with them uh, learning through each other about each other and about ourselves and then this other person comes in and I'm like oh maybe this is part of it because she kind of thinks these other people are cool and I've been hanging out with them for years um but she was just out of like a messy relationship like they lived together for like years and there was arguments of whose stuff was what and he was being a bitch about it um it was a whole thing and I thought I would step in there and be like hey I'm pretty cool like Meanwhile, I'm like a, a college dropout at the time. Uh, like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing there. You know what I mean? Uh, and I'm and I'm like working like a retail job. Like, I, I'm completely fucking batting on my league. Uh, we had like one or two nights out or something like that where we seemed to hit it off. And I was thinking like, is this something? Is this fucking something? Um, and then I realized it wasn't. I was like weirdly like resentful about it. There was a part of me that was like really resentful about it for some reason, which is very out of character for me. And there was another part of me that was more just a sobby little soapy piece of shit about it, which is more in character for me in romantic sense. Um, around the same time period as well, I remember researching like multiple, uni multiple like universe uh, theory and like Occam's Razor and shit like that. I don't remember all the ins and outs of everything I researched at the time. It was just something I found interesting uh, and looked into it more. I thought it was cool. Um, so yeah, um, that's that, that's that's kind of what that's about. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Um, all right. Like, I, w I wish the lyrics were more complicated than what they are, and I think when I wrote them, I thought they were, but now in hindsight, I'm like... Like, a lot of it is just, like, you know... Depression and being rejected. <laughs> it's a little more complicated than that, but also not that much more complicated than where I have to talk about it for, like, 30 minutes. Um... Which leads us to our next track on Fingers and Toes. On Fingers and Toes is going to make even less sense. Uh, so on Fingers and Toes is a whole different thing that kind of puts a head on this big uh, cynicism uh, epidermis, if you will. Uh, on Fingers and Toes is a dream. It's about a dream I had uh, while I was living with my parents. And... Um, I guess I'll just explain the dream first. It was... This is so exciting. Aiden's talking about their fucking stupid-ass dream. Uh, when they were, like, 23. Um, so, yeah, on fingers and toes... So, so here's the dream I have. Um, let me set the setting, I guess. Uh, my mom's basement, my parents' basement, when I before I moved out, was a finished basement that I helped put together. Um, it had full carpet. It was basically bigger than any apartment that I've ever had. Um, it was, it was pretty big. It had my own full, like, bedroom. I had, like, a living room area, basically, that went to, like, a kitchen area that had a full fridge and a stove and microwave. Uh, there was tile flooring then that went to a more carpeted area that was, like, a back, like, office area. Uh, and then the water heater was like kind of sort of about that and like near the stairs that would go upstairs. Uh, but yeah, the basement was like finished and I just lived down there. Uh, and a lot of black mold. Uh, so yeah, on fingers and toes, uh, the, the dream takes place there. It like, like this place in my dream, it was, it was just like where I lived. Um, I had a dream where I get up uh, and I look in the mirror and it doesn't quite look like me. 
um, there's like slices of it, and then they start uh, forming more and more pieces, and eventually the whole uh, thing is just like starts cracking and cracking and cracking. Um, and outside, I notice there's these like visible like wisps of wind. It looks like you know the video game Okami. Like, it looks like that art style, but that's what, like, the wind whooshes look like, kind of, sort of. And they're all out there, and, um, I, I go check out what the, what the hell's happening with that. Um, and I see this, this, this little spring of, like, water. And that's not a normal thing that's in my backyard, normally. Um, I had a, I had a wooded backyard. I lived, like, in the woods. So, like, the backyard opened up to woods pretty much it was like a at least like two eight i think two acres of like woods um that would then go into someone else's two acres of woods and then surround them um so between my back door uh of the basement to the woods there's just a spring there and the wisps seem to be centered around that and um the glass, and then way more glass than what is normally on a mirror, breaks off the mirror, like shatters and just like explodes off of it and comes out the back door and through the window as well, break, breaks through the window and all the glass from the window and the mirror are all uh, swarming around me. Um, and I try to take mental refuge to cope with my, just my life choices in this situation in the spring. Um, I dipped my head in the water, and I don't know how conscious that choice was in the dream. I don't remember being very lucid. Um, and I can feel the head pressure, and I can feel the lack of oxygen. I can feel the water around me, but I pull my head back up out of the shock of it, and every time I do this repeatedly over and over again, the reflection looks as if it's just staring off uh, into me as if it's completely unperturbed by this. Um, so that's the dream that inspired uh, this particular song on Fingers and Toes on Fake and Stupid. Um, what the lyrics actually imply after the fact, I think, is this kind of just notion of all humanity being a part of the same collective experience and not choosing to torture each other, but to clash. Um, and how there is power in a fist, there is power in a pinch, but there's also a greater power than anything researched in just like this human touch of like, just, 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 you know, being by each other and, 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 loving each other and experience um or even being unified in anything um and a lot of it has to do with how i felt at the time that there was something like that but i didn't earn it i didn't deserve it and maybe finding someone else that like felt kind of sort of the same would like fix that right which is stupid um <laughs> But I thought I had found someone like that because they felt similarly and we were hitting it off for a while. Uh, and that kind of broke apart. Um, and that leads into Heart Grow Fonder. Like, I know the album's point is to be like a circle, right? But, like, if anything bleeds into each other uh, that well on Fake and Stupid, it is on Fingers and Toes in Heart Grow Fonder. And that's obviously on purpose. Um, Heart Grow Fonder is about the specific woman. Um, who is someone I tangentially consider family still to this day. Um, I think there was a point of resentment for me as well, and I regret that. The point of Fagin' Stupid, again, is not for you to feel sorry for me <laughs> when I was in my early 20s. The point is to just kind of, for me, artistically, to stare down this notion of, like, like these, these emotions and these feelings that I had and kind of just looking into them, pointing at them and putting on the wall, not the emotions themselves, but, like, uh, you know, kind of what they were like and how I think about them now. Um, so Heart Grow Fonder feels, like, despondent and, 
and what's the word? Like, it's kind of like, like it, 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 desperation and clinging so fucking hard to this notion that like this relationship will work out okay, like even platonically because of this shared human experience I've talked about on fingers and toes because like at least some where someone like us might be happy or like maybe there is a parallel universe where we um are unified in some regard that we talk about on from fun uh the lack of closure the separation that we have on uh, in our in our relationship when we no longer talk to each other for years um me blaming myself for it uh, even when it's absolutely just depressive logical mistake and not actually logical to do so. Blackberry scene. Um, and realizing that after all that, maybe I'm just another person in that grand scheme of things that is trying to find themselves and is put in a social environment where it's okay to be kind of an asshole about it, even though it shouldn't be. Clingy. Parker Fonder is about also thinking I'm doing not necessarily a white knight thing, I guess, but I was like, I was trying to, um, because there was a part of me that, 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 you know, wanted to, wanted to be with this person. There was a part of me, that, like, like, whether, whether that meant romantically or not, like, um, was that, like, I just felt comfortable being around them and I liked talking to this person and knowing more about what she was up to. Um, and kind of how she viewed things. And I think I learned, in hindsight, I think I learned more about myself than I really gave myself time to realize at the time we were still talking to each other more regularly that um, there's a lot of that that I, that I think I realized about myself that I should have um, took a harder look in the mirror more at the time um, that I have since then. Um, so yeah, that's heart Fonder. Um, uh, but yeah, she had this, uh, terrible abusive boyfriend, um, but you know how people like that just get in your head, and she stuck with him, um, and let something slip about him that she hadn't fully grasped yet, even that they happened and that she didn't deserve it, um, that she hadn't told our collective, like, best friends yet, um, and I was very worried. So there was a part of me that was like, you know, about well, this person is the shit. I would love to spend more time with this person. And there was another part of me that was like, you need help. <laughs> and I want to, as delicately as possible, put little seeds of like, mm, you should really, for your own actual safety, get away from that fucking guy. Um, so that's kind of what Heart Crow Finder is about. Uh, is and, and a lot of the themes of the other songs just kind of pour into this one. Uh, the end is the end. Of, the end of this song and the end of the EP is kind of how I feel, um, how, or how I felt after writing it all and looking back at it. After she went off, uh, back to a faraway place to um, reconvene with her boyfriend after. Because the thing was, too, like, we, we we as a collective, me and my friends, like, our little family, almost had her, like, convinced at a certain point where she was like, yeah, this is maybe something I need to look into and this is probably not healthy. And then just full relapse. Um, uh, and and that, that was hard to deal with. So I was at that point, I think, one of the lowest emotional uh, points um, just absolute a fucking mental turmoil and and uh, kind of numbness to a lot of things. Um, I wasn't ready to feel anything else. I wasn't. I, I don't even know at certain points if I was processing anything. Um, it was bad. It was really bad. <laughs> um, like that could be a whole story in and of itself. But um, I don't remember a whole lot of it. Probably better than I don't. A lot of it was probably just dark and horrible. Um, and it was in a weird environment as well. Um, living where I lived after the fact. That's my wife. 
I mean, my... The, the, okay. Oh, no! Put, put that thing away. Put that thing away. We've talked about this. We've talked about this. Dear, dear Lord. Earth has awakened the beast in chat. Now, now that people know about the excavation. <laughs> Sam, put that down. <laughs> Sam the Silky, everybody. That's one of our favorite streamers. Um. Anyway, yeah, that's Hargrove Fonder. Um. The the end of it. The end of it is this. Um. You know, it's it's chanty and stuff like that. It kind of embodies this, the that dark feeling, but kind of sort of like looking at it from the outside, kind of like narrating it and being like, okay, this is where it's at, and this is what. 23 year old Aiden thinks this is which is like um well she's partially doing this so you don't have to deal with it but like eventually once you both get better you'll you know reconvene and be fine um and and no uh, that's not really what happens it cycles back to the composition and lyrical content of clingy <laughs> Susie the Silky is another streamer we watch very frequently who is also a fluffy chicken <laughs> That's a fucking knife. Ugh. Hell yeah. Um, how much time we have left? We have 10 ish minutes until the next ad break. And I have talked about quite in depth uh, every song on, on Fake and Stupid. I could talk more about self titled again, I guess. Uh, but not much. Not much. Because I've already, you know, I've released this album, I've talked about this album. Uh, I don't know. Um, I guess we'll talk about the changes I made with the album. That might be cool. Um, so for those who don't know, if I didn't really mention it or I briefly touched on it earlier, Self Titled was the first Lexi Karma release in 2016. Um, so when we do May 6th, like anniversary stuff, that's what we're talking about. It's a release of Self Titled. Uh, and technically this one breaks it. I released it on May 5th. That's just so no ordering on anybody's discography or. Any like online databases got fucked up, right? Um, I originally released that in my mom's basement. Uh, I spent way too much fucking money on it. This album, this time, if you don't count the plugins I bought to work on it. I, actually, you know what? Let's count the plugins. Let's count the plugins that I also spent my money on. Um, and, and I didn't have to, really, to make it sound as good as it does. Uh, it was helpful, though. I already had Ozone 9. I already had, uh, like, BFD3 and a bunch of other stuff. Um, but I did upgrade Melodyne, and I... Uh, I, I don't know, I bought that other plugin, but it wasn't for this. Um, so yeah, no, the whole budget of this was, like, under $100. Uh, versus, like... God, the original budget I said for the original self-title was like a thousand dollars. I ended up spending, I think, six hundred, and I was like, "Cool, under budget. I'm so good at this." No, you spent. You could have spent like one sixth of that, and it would have sounded better if you knew what the fuck you were doing. Um, but that's why I released it. You have to learn. Uh, let's talk about changes that I made. I guess before we. Um, dip into something else here. Hades 2 and early access, I'm sure. Sorry for that. Um, there weren't any huge changes in 12 Mar other than the choir at the end. That's just a bunch of me dubbed over. <laughs> um, originally on 12 Mar, that was all separate vocal tracks. Uh, and that's why it didn't sound super choir. It just sounded like a lot of overdub. Uh, this one, I actually, like, made a whole new Reaper file, a manual new project file, and recorded parts over and over and over and over again. Um, and then put all those together, and then exported that, and then put that as a separate, like, track. Kind of treated it as, like, a synth pad, basically. Um, and put that into 12 bar. Which I think ended up sounding cooler. Uh, Crystal? I don't have any major changes. The big changes was that I was using completely different guitars. Um, so I had two guitars and a bass when I recorded self-titled again. When I um, I recorded self-titled in my mom's basement, in my parents' basement, so I had my dad's equipment and stuff too, as well as my own. Um, 
So I had like an Ibanez S series that was mine, an Ibanez Art Core. The Ibanez S series I think was Tune Drop C. Uh, the Art Core was turn do, turn to uh, two to I think E standard. And so was the um, Fender Telecaster with the F hole in it that I had. It was a Mexican Telecaster. Um, I had an Ibanez V Blade that was tuned to C standard. I recorded most of uh, most of more on that. And I had my Ibanez uh, Geo Micro Bass, uh, which was all the bass parts back then. Um, I also had my dad's stuff. I don't think I recorded any of his electric stuff. I don't think. But I did record uh, on his... Oh, no, that's, that's a lie. Because my bass was tuned to... I think drop C or C standard at the time. His bass was still tuned to E standard, so I think I recorded break contact space on that. Um, on the original album. And I also had his acoustic, because it sounded better than mine. So I recorded the acoustic that's on more on that. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's all the equipment I had at the time. I was at a digital processor. I had like a little stomp box. It was real cute. Uh, <laughs> Um, this time around, I only had my Ibanez, um, oh god, what the fuck is, the SIX 7 FDFM, I think is what it's called, um, which is a seven string, uh, Ibanez electric guitar. Um, it's probably my favorite guitar that I've had thus far, and that's two and a half step down. Uh, at the time I also had an, a Chapman ML1, which was a half step down, uh, like e, it was like E flat standard, um, and then I had the bass, which was like E flat, or it was E flat standard, but it was a five string, so it was the same tuning as uh, the other two, basically. <laughs> that's what I recorded this whole thing on. Um, so some changes, like basically, I only changed the tunings really in most of the songs. That I had, like really heavy reliance on like open string stuff. So if Mendax sounds different a lot because of it, Selfless sounds different a lot because of it, uh, and. Masked the peel a little bit, I think. I changed that. But yeah, 12 bar didn't change in key. Crystal didn't have a key change. Mendax went up a half step because it was originally in drop C and now it's in. Uh, so I turned it up a half step. Uh, transposed it to half step. Um, Kisses is the same. Where the hell? My random sound bite. Uh, I will turn it on after the next ad break. And talk about music, and then and then random sound bites will be back. It'll be just a few minutes. Um, hi, recover. Hi. Um, master peel is tuned a half step down. Uh, shower is the same basically. Uh, kiss is the same. Six minutes is tuned a half step. It's transposed a half step up. Um, break contact is the same. Winter on on is the same. And then more is the same. Uh, I think that's all I really like to talk about with the stuff I released this, uh, this glorious week of, of, of Backstreet Boys time of the month. Uh, as such, I think it's time to do one more thing before the ad break. I think, I think it's about that time. Uh, once I find out how to use OBS, I think I think it's about that time. Lexi 3 is coming. <laughs> the third, like, full, like, thing is, is, it's gonna happen. It's gonna fucking happen. Um, I know I talked earlier about Heat Death BGM. That's a different thing. That's like an EP. Lexi 3 is gonna be a whole ass full length album. 
Um, I think last time I put together like uh, how long is this going to be? I think it's roughly around like sometime, somewhere between 40 and 50 minutes. Um, I think it's going to be a little longer than uh, self-titled again, which is like 40 minutes. Um, it's going to be fucking big and I'm excited as hell about it. Um, it's also like I was saying earlier, it's it's kind of a bunch of older stuff that I've written a while ago, but there's also some like newer stuff put in and there. Um, I did a lot of like cool stuff with it. You'll see whenever it comes out. Um, I don't know how soon it's going to be because it is a bigger project. Um, I would say don't expect it May 6, 2025, but I might have something to, like show for it. Maybe a demo or maybe you're like release one or two songs early before that, uh, depending on what's happened. We'll see. Okay. Uh, how much time does that leave us with? That's about it, yeah. I'm gonna turn on all the all the normal redeems <laughs> again, uh, and take a and take an ad break. And then we're gonna play fucking Hades. Oh hold on, wait a second. Let me this is gonna drive me crazy later. Hold on. Okay, we're back in silly mode now. <laughs> Ice cold that's a wine. that's a redeem I did keep because I was like I should probably do that shit, and I'm not gonna remind myself to do that. Thank you. There's another alarm on my phone. Wow. Uh, anyway. <laughs> I'll be back. I will hydrate and, and posture check on the during the break. Um, actually, you know what, fucker. That's me drinking water. You probably couldn't hear that, but that's me popping my back. All right, I'm back. <laughs> 